This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, Florida Natural Farming, and we got our first mango yesterday, Easter Sunday. So this is from um, fruit that was uh, trees that were flowering in in uh, December before the freeze and it's I mean, it was picked a little early but you can see the scratch marks on it uh, the raccoons uh, have been I like attacking my fruit that's big and pulling it off and then eating it after it ripens because mangoes are one of those things that you can pick early and they ripen up generally. <clears throat> so I had to make an executive decision <laughs> before all the low hanging fruit was gone. Um, I love the raccoons. I think that we treat them like we treat our homeless and we're in their home and we don't provide one for them. There's really no wild space here in Florida that I can see around us, except for the ditches. You know, the ditches they dug because they got compacted standing water. They thought that would solve their problems, but um, it probably does. Runs off and goes into the lagoon eventually, all the pollution and everything, but that's their only home is along the, along the uh, ditches. That's the wild space here. And um, if people get, the, our neighbor whose property just uh, went pending, thank you, thank you, because uh, they put it up for sale and it finally is gonna sell. He, uh, he shot all the raccoons and trapped everything and killed all the possums and shot all the squirrels and, um, like everything he like he owned everything and and if we all were doing that then there just wouldn't be anything left so i just don't understand why some people think that it's okay to displace individuals and um not provide them a home and then kill them. It's just scary. <sighs> Poor animals. That's like we treat the homeless. They have no home. We don't want them on our sidewalks. It's the same thing. Uh, the, the wildlife has no home left. And we don't want them in our yards. And some of us will just kill them. And, um, Pretty soon there ain't gonna be any left. So we like them, we give them a home here. They eat our fruit, I don't care. I'd rather have the raccoons than no raccoon. So we have plenty of fruit, more fruit than I can possibly ever eat in my lifetime, guaranteed. So that's our first fruit punch mango picked a little early um i'm gonna go out and look at our mango trees and uh we also have some bananas that are ripe that the uh possums were getting this in that area where these were they would they just got a big clump of them but i i start chewing off the ends and um damaging the fruit, but I still eat it. I just don't eat where they ate. <gasps> Probably wouldn't be able to sell them, but maybe. Doesn't matter. They're really good. So I'm obsessed with these aeroids, in case any of you haven't noticed. And I like to watch the aeroid um, plant collectors, some of them. And, um, cause you can't watch them all, there's so many. Um, they show their uh, 
their journeys of growing these uh, rare aeroids in, indoors, artificial conditions. Of course, you know, we are able to use compost, biodynamic compost, and I've got these aeroids to plant into our orchard floor to make our system a better system when there's more shade here because these grow in deep shade in, uh, you know, Bolivia and Ecuador and Brazil and, you know, places like that. And um, that's where a lot of our fruit trees originate from. So um, I figured it would be good. I love this philodendron linamii and the leaves are uh, like bronze colored, the new leaves. They're just uh, stunning. The backs of them are really, look at that. They're kind of expensive. Uh, my partner was getting kind of freaked out because I was buying all these things and um, this is a philodendron, uh, Sharonie mus muscara. It's beautiful. Um, but I finally, I, I, I have enough. I feel like I have enough. And that's always a good point when you get to there. I have like 27 anthuriums. These are all anthuriums. This is a anthurium serenoi. That's a new leaf. This is the old leaf. Velvety is what it is um, from Equigenera. There's the old leaf. Uh, this is a new leaf on um, Waterberryanum, Anthurium Waterberryanum. And I got a new leaf on this uh, Anthurium. Pedura laminum. Last new leaf was damaged when it came out right here. And then this had just had a tiny, so it must have been some sort of scar or something. I don't know. Uh, probably from shipping, would be my guess. But the leaves are very interesting. And this is uh, Anthurium dolichostachium. Beautiful leaves. This is Anthurium querimolens. These are all new leaves. Um, the stuff grows in the uh, biodynamic compost. So what I never mention in the biodynamic compost, this is a philodendron Jose Buono, uh, a plant I bought from Orchid Box Inc. And it was one of those pre-orders. And they, I guess they import them from, uh, Indonesia and then you can get them cheaper that way and then like a month later they get them in and then they hold them for two weeks so you have to wait to pay for it and then you have to wait but this was a very inexpensive plant I mean I bought these because they were inexpensive this little node cutting of uh, philodendron burly marks variegata and this was a leaf node a node with a leaf of uh, domesticum and it looks like it's gonna be very variegated. I'm so excited. I'm getting a new leaf on this Half Moon Monstera Deliciosa Albo with good variegation, obviously. So here's some more um, anthuriums. I got anthurium magnificum. That's a new leaf. And this is radicans anthurium and betiae. I got enough, though I do see these things and I, I saw this one plant called philodendron, I think it was species Columbia, and um, on one of my liked videos I watched today, and um, uh, Jasmina Lowe, and um, I could see myself she bought it for herself for her birthday. That's what I do. I buy, I use, I would buy myself gifts of these things for, you know, it started out because I bought myself a Christmas present and I was so embarrassed about it because I spent $150 on a little uh, piece of stick that I wasn't sure if it was going to live. 
<laughs> that was that Monstera Deliciosa Alba. And it took me over a year before I told my partner what I had done. And then gradually it got into all these, so, but I think I've got enough. I would want, like to get a couple more, but um, I'm okay. So I wanna go look at some of our, our mangoes since that's what I was, uh... Man, it's so beautiful here. It really, Florida, everyone's moving here. Everyone wants to live here. Well, you don't have to water and it looks like this. <laughs> that pretty much says it all. <laughs> you can grow everything here. It's Florida, you can grow everything here. You don't need to even buy chemicals. That's the sad part. Yeah, there's no wild space and then everything's polluted. Then they pollute everything. And then, because they mow. So the whole thing with mowing started because rich people could afford lawnmowers and they mowed their areas. And then they realized that they could steal people's property by making rules saying you have to uh, keep your property mowed. And if you couldn't afford a mower and you got sick, they would start fining your property. And they kind of tried that with us when we first started growing our um, orchard floor out. I realized what they were up to by canceling our insurance a week before a hurricane. You can't get a new policy. Um, that's how they do it. That's how it's, it happens. But they didn't realize I was married to a lieutenant colonel in the Marine Corps and <clears throat> had a farm plan by the USDA organic program. So they had to re restore my insurance, but that's what would happen. That's how it was developed. It's a total colonial um, tool to keep the oppressed press and pollute the, the freaking lagoon. Look at these mangoes. So we got two crops on a lot of our mango trees. Some of our mango trees don't have any fruit, which is kind of a little odd for here. But we've had some weird, wicked weather this year. And two days of freeze and wind and um, five inches of rain a couple times, uh, different days in like an hour. So you know that was hard on these little mango trees. It's a little bunnies. They'll eat, your, they'll eat your seedlings. They'll eat your favorite seedling, but I don't care. Plant some more. So here's like two crops right on this tree here. This little one looks like it's gonna fall off though. But there's a lot of little ones. Um, no water. They like the cow manure. So my biodynamic compost, I was gonna say, I do Bokashi, my fruit, cause I got the, the aeroids to grow. I'll get back to the mangoes, but I got the aeroids, I forgot. Cause I wanted to talk about compost a little bit. I bought the, got the aeroids cause I love them. First of all, that's why I got them. And then, but also I justified it by saying they will improve my system. They'll improve my fruit tree's productivity productivity in a more shady environment. Because there are uh, phototrophic bacteria out there that can direct um, light, I guess. Assist in photosynthesis. So I do bokashi of all of our fruit. Uh, um, all of our, our fruit we grow, mango scraps, um, and so this is like Bokashi from eight months ago. This is Bokashi from four months ago. This is Bokashi from uh, just now. It's current and it's like three months old probably. Maybe it's like two months each. So then just the, our food scraps which is the fruit we eat and stuff. And then I dump it on top of our, our compost. And there's black soldier flies in there and who knows what, fungi in there. And I've been doing that for years. 
Um, and so these, and then I make compost of it, and this is what I'm growing the, uh, the aeroids in. And I put it, I've been making compost around this huge live oak tree for five years. That's a gorgeous tree. And there's all kinds of life that lives in it. Possums, raccoons, squirrels. We have very few squirrels because it seems to be, squirrels seem to be the, the food of choice of the, the hawks and the eagles. The falcons. So here's the, our compost. And I used to do huge, giant, tall piles like this tall and turn it originally the thermophilic compost what a pain in my craw and uh, unbelievable and it would ruin the whole area it would just like it was just uh, no grass and just compacted and so i quickly moved on to a, a non-turned compost system but i would still make the huge piles and then I would put some like plastic tubes in it with holes in it to for because I thought it needed air. Yeah, because it's so freaking huge and unnatural that biology can't break it down. So then I finally moved on to this low pile. It's like I don't know. It's at its highest part when I first dump it. It's like two feet. And then, but it decomposes quick. And then I dump my Bakashi compost on top of it. The, uh, probably two cans of it. And then put my biodynamic preps in it. Um, because we're biodynamic certified. And so far I want to stay certified, but I doesn't people don't really seem to care about it here in Florida look at that lizard looks that mushroom all this life that we need that's all the life is the is our nutrients there's all the nutrients that you put in your plants and the fungicides they wind up in water and air eventually. This is back when I used to eat eggs. Uh, been vegan for a little while now. But this is like an old cacao. So those plants are growing in compost. This is where the old piles were. This was the fermented cacao from those little seedlings I show in my videos that are like a year old. I guess it was totally fermented and doesn't break down. I find that very interesting because uh, the fresh ones break down fairly quickly. Anyway, all the stuff that I want them to help grow better is stuff that I'm feeding them. Because plants, have a symbiotic relationship with the environment. Oh, looks like a portobello mushroom to me. Is it my blue? No, yep, it's an edible mushroom. Uh, I'm fairly certain. That's our compost. So, yeah, so it's all stuff is connected. Um, there's a pile there that's a little older. Um, it's my potting soil. Uh, it, during the rainy season, because I don't water it it's totally unnecessary to water your compost pile. I mean, that's just totally crazy. Um, if it's small, small, low compost piles.
<clears throat> I found that that's, that's the best compost for us. The one that turns into soil quickest, the compost. And it, I mean, that just kind of just, it, it, that just kind of makes sense to me that that's how it should be, right? Something that turns into soil is better than something that doesn't turn into soil. And if it happens real fast, that's what you want. Quick turnover of nutrients. So yeah, we have mangoes and then I saw, I was wondering if we would get um, a third bloom. These little trees are like, this is a two year old tree. This is Malika, I believe. Yep, that's who it is. This is uh, Namdak Mai. And I was walking by this tree yesterday and lo and behold, it's got a bloom on it. A third bloom. So our mango season starts in April and these mangoes aren't going to be ready until August if they hold. Uh, it's a mixed bloom because it's so warm, but um, and then we got mango fruit that's getting kind of big. That's been through a lot. Uh, they're still nowhere near the size. They might fall off, but they're getting big enough where I would eat them. <clears throat> I kind of like them not so sweet anymore, but I'm telling you, I did it to myself, making a pig of myself. Um, look at these. Uh, this is my favorite mulberry. I got this from a good friend of mine in Felsmere. It's growing, it was an old tree growing on his mother's property in Felsmere. They also have a fruiting guanabana trees, which is delicious guanabanas. I planted about a hundred seeds of that uh, last year. And um, I can't wait. It makes your hands dirty and it blooms kind of got excellent flavor and um, blooms when nothing else is. Blooms and fruits when the others aren't fruiting. So in like December, when world's best for us hasn't been fruiting. Maybe it does. I don't know. I haven't been growing them that long, so I'm not a mulberry expert. Hey, we got to provide a home for animals. You can't just like think that you could kill them just because. <laughs> like, I don't understand some of this stuff we do as humans, I guess. But I never understood the whole using copper when you know it kills frogs. And it's like, that's what we're going to push. And it doesn't even work. I'm probably. The only fruit that's made me sick is fruit that I've eaten from nurseries. So you're gonna treat your home like a nursery. I'm talking like kidney pain after I eat fruit. You know, from the copper, I'm sure. And the fungicides, and the, they use systemic fungicides in their fruit. And it's like, dude, Yeah, you get a, a piece of fruit that looks delicious, but do you really want to kill all the frogs and make yourself sick? Doesn't make any sense to me, some of this stuff people do. Especially when we can grow organically like we do here. This is that philodendron fricatum. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous philodendron. And um, it's looking good. 
This, act, this is actual plant from Equigenera, not a cutting, because I bought two plants on accident. I got delirious and bought uh, a second one, but I thought, well, I can grow that outside. So that's what I did. I have one indoors or, you know, in the sunroom. And this is a philodendron uh, giganteum from Equigenera. Um, I was going to plant my uh, philodendron giganteum uh, variegata uh, blizzard out here, but um, I'm going to uh, propagate it first. It's just, it grows so fast I need to propagate it. I need to be able to propagate it so, so I could spread it around. Mm -hmm. So, but it was planted in our biodynamic compost first to, you know, put it into organic boot camp, basically. And it's dry here. This is like, it's been really dry. We got like a quarter inch, maybe an eighth, or an eighth to a quarter. Um, I thought I had one planted here. I do. The tenu, philodendron tenu uh, leaf cutting. It was rooted in our biodynamic compost. It looks fine. This is that philodendron chironiae. Some people are only into like food plants, but They're plants that eat the food that I eat, that I'm, I'm growing to help my achacha trees produce better fruit and more of it. <clears throat> everything is connected and everything's needed. Uh, for some reason, we like to select what we feel is, is, uh, is deemed worthy. And a lot of times it totally disregards life. There's a citrus kumquat, seed grown, organic seed, dry farmed, no water ever. All this stuff grows without being watered. And it's like, how could we forget that we didn't need to do anything? I mean, really, the trees we're planting are an invasive species here in Florida. Invasive species have vigor. That's why pepper trees do so good. So to think that we can, we should like kill its natural ability to dominate its space it's invading. Through biological elimination and then pick the nutrients we deem appropriate or that are available it's just I don't know it's just so basic it really is I understand when you're growing in a house indoors but here in Florida I mean, because those plants are filthy. I mean, my compost, I would never bring my plants in my house ever. <laughs> no, not with what I've seen come out of that compost. There's no way. Mm -mm. Nope, got to draw the line somewhere. The creatures have to stay out of the house. <clears throat> I thought there was a lot of mangoes on that tree over there, but I'm looking at it and it doesn't even look, maybe they fell, went down. Maybe they went down. This poor jackfruit tree 
Just got hit by the freeze. It's the only one that got hit by the freeze. And it's just, it wants it to rain, I think. There's one group of jackfruits that always seem to uh, freeze. But I have to do more, you know, growing of the different ones. And oh no, there's lots of fruit on this tree. Yeah, these fruits aren't going to be ready. Our, our peak season looks like it's going to be around July. June, maybe. Yep, no water. I mean, look at this. Come on. Why do they tell you you have, you have to spray? Spray. It's like, dude. What's your soil situation? I don't know. I use wood chips. I mow the floor and use wood chips. That's too basic of a system, compacted system at that. Kind of impossible to grow healthy, healthy tree crops. I don't see people changing here in Florida, and that's a shame because it's really a spectacular sight. Um, and uh, why we destroy it? We like it so much, and then we destroy it, and then plant your like four plants that you decide are what you want your palm tree, your mango tree, and your avocado tree. Mow and kill everything else. It's not really a, a this is a, a cutting from that uh, mulberry I said I liked earlier. Anyway, I guess I'll say save going to look at the uh, look at the uh, rest of the mangoes to see if they're flowering for another day. The little mango seedlings are doing great. This is a uh, one of the few. Well, we had several cashews that survived seedling cashews from last year. These are super fast growing and super productive in Florida. Um, but a lot of them froze back. They can't take the freeze when they're little. So they froze last year, my seedlings, and then they fro froze this year. But this year I planted more of them because I had more fruit this year, this past summer than the year before. And we're gonna have more fruit this year, so. It'll stop freezing one of these winters. Hopefully it won't freeze this year or for the next 10, but um, we'll see. Weather's gotten strange, as everyone knows. Because we polluted the hell out of everything. That's why. I mean, come on. Uh, here's a cutting of world's best um, mulberry. Look at how much fruit that thing has. A little fruit for a little tree right next to a cashew. Seedling. Leaves getting ready to fall off. Anyway, this is Florida Natural Farming, Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Beautiful day.